shearing is a busy time, but it pays to be prepared and have the shed and sheep organised before the shearer arrives. The night before shearer, the shearers come, you want to have your sheep in and off feed and water, and the times involved are in the code of practice. Uh, all sheep should be sorted so that any sheep that have black fleeces should be shorn separately from sheep with white faces. And any sheep that have short fleeces or discoloured fleeces want to be separated and shorn separately. Once you, the shearer is there and you're shearing, it pays to take a minute or two on each fleece and throw it on a table and, and sort the fleece so that all your good wool is sorted from the poorer quality wool and it can make a big difference on the returns on your wool check. Um, requirements for the shearing shed is a, a shearing table. Uh, a shearing table, it's a slatted table. It can be either um, homemade, and there are plans on the Canadian Crop Wool Growers website on how to make one, or I just use an old bed spring. Um, the, the fleece is picked up and thrown on the table, and then you go around the outsides of the fleece, picking out, off all of the short wool and the wool that is stained from manure and, uh, and sweat. And, uh, and then put it into a bag. Any um, marking paints or sprays want to be pulled out and put into your pieces too. Uh, when you're actually marking your sheep with any sheep paints or sprays, make sure it is scarable stuff. The scarable sprays can actually be left on the main fleece because it, it does scour out. But uh, anything that is, any paint that is used that is not scarable, um, that wool is, is uh, not usable it's, uh, because it's destroyed the wool. Um, when the shearing, if the shearer comes across a uh, sheep that's got a black spot or any black wool at all, um, it pays to ask the shearer to let you know and you can pull that wool out and so that you try to avoid any black wool contaminating the main fleece. Uh, the person that's doing the wool handling wants to sweep the floor between every sheep, keep the floor clean and tidy, and, uh, and you don't actually have to pack the wool as you are shearing, if you want to sort some of the wool out and just put it in a bin or to one side and then pack it later if, you have, if you've got the time. When the shearer starts, uh, he cuts the belly off and usually throws the belly to one side. That wool needs to be picked up and put into one bin. Um, then the shearer goes down through the crutch. You want to sweep that wool to one side and pick that up and put it into your, into your pieces bag. The, uh, and the shearer goes up and does the head, which is the top knot. Not every breed has a top knot, which is the wool up between the ears. That wool is cut off, and that is usually contaminated with chaff and, um, and grass and twigs. That wool has that top knot needs to be picked up and, and put in, into a separate bin. And once the shearer is finished, uh, the wool handler approaches the, uh, the shearer uh, between the shearer and the sheep and picks up the fleece and throws it on the table. And then the wool handler goes around the outside of the fleece, picking out all the pieces and the chaffy wool. You need a, uh, a bag or even cardboard boxes or bins or something that would do for, you need a bin for, or a bag for your, for your chaffy wool, which is all the wool contaminated with uh, vegetable matter. A, a bag for the uh, pieces, which is all the off sorts um, and if you have sheep with black wool, you need a separate bag for the, uh, any black wool. And, uh, and then a, a, a bag for, the, for your bellies. Any manure hanging on the wool, lumps of manure, all that manure must be pulled separately from all wool and packed totally separate and it has to be dry before it's packed. Uh, pressing the wool, there's, there's two types of bags that wool growers uh, handle. is your, your jute bags, which is your long sausage bag, and also the New Zealand style square packs. Um, both bags should be packed as tight as possible. Even if you've got a half a bag, pack it as tight as possible, and, uh, and so it's actually a smaller bag. Because if a, if a bag is too, too soft, it's, it's harder to handle, and, it, and the shipping costs are a lot more expensive. Uh, when, for, the, uh, for the sausage bags, um, the secret is if you haven't got a mechanical machine packing it, you need to be tramping it uh, after every two or three fleeces in order to get a tight bag. 
with the square packs, uh, it's a, the secret of the square packs is to put four fleeces at a time in and push them down into the corners and then just keep packing until you can't get any more wool in the bag. Every bag should be numbered, so if you've got 10 bags, it's 1 to 10, and write on the outside of the bag what is in the bag. If it's fleece wool, A fleeces or B fleeces, um, belly wool, chaffy pieces, needs to be written on the bag. If you've only got a little bit of each, put the, whatever your, your fleeces in, put a piece of newspaper down or any sort of paper, and put a different type of um, class of wool in, put some newspaper in, and then just until your bag is full. Use paper of any sort to, uh, to separate the classes of wool. It pays to put the black wool into a plastic bag first, then put it in, in, the, uh, in the bag, and that way that black fibres don't contaminate the, uh, uh, the white wool. Uh, black fleeces are good for the, uh, for the specialist market, but the uh, commercial value of the black fleeces is nowhere near what it is for the, uh, for the white fleeces. Lamb shearing, uh, the wool handling is totally different for lambs. Uh, it's basically lamb's wool or any very short fleeces will not stay together when it's shorn as a fleece. So the, uh, the wool handler has to be there with a broom or a sweeper and sort the wool as it's coming off the animal. Uh, the important part is, it's the same with the, uh, with the adult sheep, um, the belly and through the crutch is swept to one side. Um, the rest of the wool is just swept away as it falls off the sheep uh, uh, as it's shorn and it's easy enough to pick out the, uh, the sweat stained and manure stained wool as it's coming off and you just pile up the good wool in one pile and the, uh, the second quality wool uh, into another bag, uh, being, making sure you pull out any black fibre along the line. So it's important to keep the black fibre separate from the, uh, from the good white wool. The benefits of shearing lambs is um, the lambs after, sure, after they're shorn will have a much faster growth rate. Um, studies have shown that lambs on feedlot um, finish a lot quicker if, they, if they've been shorn. Um, and, and, well that's, and when it's going to the slaughter plant, um, the shorn lambs, when they skin those lambs out, there's less contamination on the meat from um, any manure or dirt hanging on, that's normally hanging on the wool that can actually can't come in contact with the meat, whereas if the lamb is shorn, the clean skins, there's no contamination at all going on to the meat. It doesn't matter what the grade of wool is, it can all be put in the same bag as long as the different classes of wool are separated by paper between each layer of, of wool. So if you put in the la a layer of fleece wool, pack it down as tight as you can, lay some paper down, then you can put in lamb's wool, you can put in belly wool, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as there's paper separating the different classes of wool and it's written on the side of the bag of what classes of wool are in the bag, as long as you can fill the bag up is the main thing.